service is going to be starting again in, yes. that, in that particular area tomorrow. Um, I know that it was tragic what happened, and you lost two friends in that event. So how are you How are you feeling overall on the, the anniversary is coming up, but also service is starting again? How do you feel about this? Okay, well, yeah, indeed, uh, uh, Jim Hamry and Zach Wellhoyt were very close friends. Both important, extremely important to our advocacy organization and important to Darlene and I personally. Jim Hamley, the older of the two gentlemen, was a groomsman at our wedding, in fact. And Zach was uh, always just immediately helpful with the, uh, uh, any of the computer type things, mm -hmm. of which I am not particularly skilled. But they're both good friends. Uh, our loss is felt to this day. Uh, however, we also recognize that that was an anomaly. Uh, three people died that day. But on that same day, many died on the highways of the state of Washington. And uh, why was it not publicized so much by King or others? Because it happens every day. It's not even real news compared to the tragedy that occurred four years ago that took my friend's life. And I think that's important to point out, is that trains are dramatically safer than private motor vehicles. And I know that they've made a lot of modifications as well. I just did an interview with Sound Transit, who, sure. they, and they said they've, they've done a lot. And it's taken so long to open this area back up because they wanted to make sure it's safe for passengers. Um, that's why I thought you had a unique uh, perspective, not only as somebody who knows about trains, but also someone who lost two friends in that incident. So, I mean, some people are wondering, is it, is it safe for me to ride just after that happened? Oh, emphatically, yes. In fact, it would have been safe that day as there was a legislator and a hearing that was held in uh, January of, uh, of 18, again, just a month following the tragedy. And he says, no, wait a minute. 78 miles an hour in a 30 zone, and somehow it's the train's fault? A rhetorical question, but a smart one. Uh, it was relatively safe then. It was just the matter of the uh, unfortunate excessive speed of which there were other reasons behind that. But uh, without that speed, the train was relatively safe. And now they've made the whole operation virtually so, uh, foolproof, which I think is important. I was going to say, I know that you know much more about trains than I do. Um, so have you looked into some of the different uh, safety modifications? Are you knowledgeable about what they've done? Uh, to a significant degree, but I'll be very honest. I have, I have confidence that after that tragedy, they're going to uh, go over many times any of the nuances that would be involved. And I think both the technology and the decision-making processes are now such that uh, uh, it's virtually foolproof. I, I feel very comfortable that all the technical things they have done, uh, and I don't presume to have knowledge of all these issues. I just am confident in reading about them that they're more than adequate. Would you um, yourself, you and your wife, would you ride the route? Um, if you were to be in Seattle tomorrow and you were coming this way, would you would you ride it? You oh, of course. I, I do have a comment, however. Mm -hmm. uh, the old route, the one that ends today, is one of the most beautiful pieces of railroad in the Northwest or in the West. The new route uh, going straight across from Nisqually to Tacoma shall we say, is a little less picturesque. Mm -hmm. And that's putting it mildly. <laughs> uh, I do have another comment on that, too, and it was one thing that Mr. Hamry pointed out when he was still with us, is that one of the ostensible reasons for making that investment was to cut out uh, quite a bit of distance between Olympia and Tacoma. And the schedule was to have taken 10 minutes out of the schedule. Well, Hamry and 
uh, uh, Zach Wilhoit and myself all felt, now wait a minute, only 10 minutes of all that distance taken out? That's a lot of investment for 10 minutes. Well, I'm sorry to say in checking the information, I just double checked this morning, they're not taking any time out. It's the same schedule that they had in 2016, 2017, uh, leaving Portland at uh, 8.20 and arriving Tacoma 10.54. Now, hopefully that will change. Yeah. But at this time, again, one of the important reasons for instituting these uh, investments was to cut the running time. And as of tomorrow, uh, the schedule hasn't changed. Uh, I hope it does. Not that they would go too fast or uh, be careless, but I guess it's about 15 miles less time and with that, there should be some time out of the schedule. I have another question for you. Why were your uh, two friends on that train that day? Because they're, they were devoted, they were devoted enthusiasts mm -hmm. as well as being rail advocates. They, they were both. And they wanted to be on that first train. Uh, I got to ride three days before along with the press and others I was supposedly a VIP, being the head of the Rail, Associate, Rail Passenger Association. And uh, we rode across the, the failed curve and everything was fine because we hit the curve at 30 miles an hour, yeah. not 78. Um, but uh, they wanted to be on the first paying trip. And uh, interesting, my wife and I were hosts at Olympia's Centennial Station right outside of town here near Lacey. And we were there waiting for the train to arrive, you know, to greet the passengers. And one of the volunteers at Centennial Station got a phone call and said, there's been a derailment near DuPont. And we thought, oh no, they'll have to get on a bus that's gonna ruin the trip. And then we learned later, of course, that it was critical and fatal. Uh, we learned about the death of our friends and the other man, the third man, uh, at about five the next morning. Uh, we were a phone call from a mutual friend found out about that. We had a suspicion because we uh, we tried the phone, and uh, Zach and Jim were were big on keeping us apprised of what they were doing and where they were, and we couldn't get in touch with them and we couldn't get in touch in the hospitals. So we were, we were fearful, and when we got the, the, the phone call, we were saddened but not terribly shocked. Not terribly shocked? Why do you say not terribly shocked? Because we had been trying to get a hold of them for eight hours, okay. and it, it just wasn't them to not answer. Or we checked uh, hospitals all over Pearson, Thurston County, and. And so we were afraid that they were among the, the lost. You know, a lot of people were thinking, um, oh, wow, that was a close call. That could have been me. I mean, Jim was riding with one of our former reporters, Alex Rosier. What, you got off the stop before? We got off in Tacoma. They got off in Tacoma, the stop before. You had ridden the train a couple days before. Yeah, just three days before. And in fact, I think uh, King was there. Uh, I was interviewed by somebody, I don't know whether it was you, Cairo, or Como, but uh, we were on the train and uh, they wanted to ask just questions about how you like it. Everything was routine, everything was fine. Do you think about that um, with the loss of your two friends and with what happened in that tragedy? That could have happened while I was on the train. That's right. That's right. All of that day, again, we rounded the corner at 30, not at 78. So it was, uh, unfortunately, the uh, conductor and his assistant had not been trained on that route. And obviously, uh, December 17th is about the darkest part of the year. And it was completely dark. And they missed the signs. Uh, very, very unfortunate, of course.
What are you um, kind of hoping for moving forward? I know that they've made a lot of safety modifications. They want to make I'm sure... I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, I said, what are you hoping for moving forward? I know they've made a lot of safety modifications so people feel safe, but what is your, your biggest hope coming out of this tragedy? Uh, well, I hope that we, we will soon, and then, of course, a dual tragedy is the COVID plague. Uh, but the, uh, what we're hoping is that they will increase the service. To me, I, I uh, equate uh, unpleasant uh, medical situations with driving I-5 at rush hour. Uh, you've probably had that experience. Well, riding the train, one avoids I-5 at rush hour and other analogous situations. It's comfortable. Uh, 17 times safer than driving your own motor vehicle uh, per million passenger miles. That's mm -hmm. the, the fair way of, of uh, judging it. And environmentally sound and uh, by adding more services, it isn't that there's just a small finite number of people that will ride a train. That's a myth that, well, if you ride two more trains, you just divide up the small group that wants to, no, it's, it, it's almost geometric, it's multiple. The more services you have, the more people sense the convenience of it, mm -hmm. and the more will ride. This has been found in California in adding service between LA and San Diego, or uh, Sacramento and Fresno. You know, adding service multiplies the number of people that will choose to ride because of schedule convenience and so forth. This might be a hard question to answer, but I'm wondering um, with, you know, how well you knew them and stuff, if you might be able to answer it. Um, do you think if they would have survived through that incident after all these safety met, uh, modifications that they made, and it's hard again, I don't know if you'll be able to know, but do you think they would ride it again? Given oh, absolutely. I don't see any difficulty at all. Uh, Jim Hamry, in fact, was very knowledgeable. Well, they're both transportation professionals. Zach worked for Pierce Transit. And Jim was a recent, then recently retired uh, lifetime employee with DOT. So, so they were uh, professionals in the field of transportation, uh, not, not the rail division, but they, they really knew enough to have been in that. And I just don't, uh, Jim would probably, he tend to be outspoken and opinionated, but he was right on the issues. Mm -hmm. Just like he was griping before he passed at the, uh, uh, even though the uh, new station in Tacoma is very nice and it meets, of course, the sound transit trains and Tacoma Link Rail and the buses, he thought that was good, but he was complaining that there, for people that do drive, there just was very inadequate parking at Tacoma mm -hmm. and nothing is being done about it. Well, you can go to some lot over there and pay for it. You know, that's not according to Jim, and I agree, a satisfactory answer. In terms of their riding again, uh, after they complained about the, the issues, they would be on the trains. I have no doubt of that. That was great. I don't think I have anything else to ask unless there's something else you wanted to add I didn't ask you. No, just to say that, that uh, the, uh, if indeed they can take the time out the way it was meant to be, then the investment will have in the long run be worthwhile. Oh, another point is that the, uh, the waterfront track is the Burlington Northern Santa Fe main line, and they hope to increase their freight service. I do too. I'm for freight trains as well. And uh, by adding more passenger trains through the tunnel under Point Defiance, it would just become too crowded and too hassle. So it had, for that reason as well, take the overland route. Um, but basically the, the, the station is nice, the new Tacoma station, and the fact that it c connects directly with those other transportation uh, modes is a strong step in the right direction. Uh, in Europe, for example, one can go uh, it, almost any major city in Europe and get off one train and get onto the local train by 
taking five steps. And many times we are still much less developed in that respect. And in Tacoma, having these various modes congregate in the one location is certainly a step in the right direction.